The Wild Atlantic Salmon has been a special symbol for the people and cultures along the North Atlantic coast for tens of thousands of years. These fascinating fish are born in rivers in the United States, Canada, Europe, and Russia, and migrate into the Atlantic Ocean to grow and feed. They congregate off the coast of western Greenland, and once they're ready to spawn, return to the rivers where they were born. In the United States, wild Atlantic salmon were once found in New England rivers from Connecticut to Maine. Today, the population that returns to the rivers of the Gulf of Maine is the last wild population of Atlantic salmon in the United States. To prevent wild Atlantic salmon from extinction, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the National Marine Fisheries Service listed the Gulf of Maine population as endangered in 2000. Working with organizations such as the Maine Department of Marine Resources, the Penobscot Indian Nation, local communities, industry, and nonprofit conservation groups, a strong partnership is focused on restoring streams and rivers throughout Maine for Atlantic salmon. This project came about uh, uh, many years ago when Eastern Fine Paper went out of business. This dam and the, and the dam lower in the river were no longer being utilized by the, the mill for uh, their paper processing. So those dams are turned over to the respective towns. Uh, and this particular dam uh, was turned over to the town of Orrington and, uh, and the lower dam was turned over to the town of Brewer. The town needed to make a decision as to what they wanted to do with this area and it was either we take the dam out totally and not do anything or look for a project that you know would be pristine you know for the community one that'd be useful for kayakers canoers and so forth one thing that's so important on these projects is reaching out to the communities and understanding what their needs are understanding what their perspective is and in a project like the fields pond project uh, we actually use National Fish and Wildlife Foundation uh, funds to fund an assessment, an uh, alternatives assessment, to go in, consultants went in, met with the town, explored different opportunities and options, looked at dam removal, looked at fishway construction, looked at a rock ramp, and really sat down and tried to understand what the people in the town wanted. And as a result of that, there was a much more creative solution that was found, which was the construction of the rock ramp. The rock ramp, or the nature-like fishway that we see here, uh, it, it's an engineered structure that is uh, specifically designed to uh, resemble a, a, a natural stream channel, but at the same time maintain some of the functions that dams still provide. Uh, but we believe it's the best alternative uh, to fish passage over keeping a dam structure here, which is the more typical dam that we, uh, that we see on rivers and streams. We electrofish a site just about 200 yards downstream of here. We've documented um, three new coming um, diatomous species that have come up to that site and, and we've captured them, Atlantic salmon, alewife, and, and um, sea lamprey, like I was saying, in these sites. So that's good news, I think, for connectivity. Marine drive, or marine species have made their way into this freshwater environment. Uh, into the Junkadunk stream, two years after the dam was removed, uh, we estimated uh, around 170 fish uh, that returned to Sajunkadunk on their own without any help from the outside. This, this was dual fold for me. Number one was to, to provide as access of alewives and others uh, to the ponds, but also to create an area that the town could be proud of, one in which would be functional for them for access to the uh, ponds and also a place where they could come back, sit back and relax. And it, some days this place is packed on sunny days and so forth. So, so we're very proud of what we got here. 